Here is a picture of Taylor Lautner's torso. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, fine, I'll say some stuff. Jeez. The whole sexy werewolf thing is really just the other side of the sexy vampire coin. They're different in that vampires tend to be more sophisticated and snooty, while werewolves are typically more earthy and tribal. It's sort of like vampires are cat people, where werewolves are, quite literally, dog people. But they both have animalistic qualities, and they both have that whole dangerous, scary, deadly curse thing that the ladies seem to love so much. And although there aren't that many examples of gay werewolf characters, apart from that lesbian werewolf movie that's been stuck in development hell since forever, it's fair to say that hairy dudes, frequent shirtlessness, and a solid furry following add up to quite a few gay fans. Werewolves actually have a story-related excuse for not wearing a shirt. Because no one wants to transform into a vicious man-eating monster and ruin their expensive Hollister tank top. These guys probably wouldn't even wear pants if it wasn't illegal. And this probably accounts for at least part of the reason that Twilight, Teen Wolf, True Blood, and Being Human have such large gay audiences. True Blood's Alcide has actually become one of the more popular characters, in part because he's arguably the most likable and morally centered of Sookie's entourage of supernatural love interests, and in part because he's f***ing hot. And Being Human's main wolf in the UK is actually played by a gay actor. Both of them are frequently naked. Complaints are decidedly infrequent. Werewolf legends date all the way back to ancient Greek mythology. The curse was usually the resulting punishment of horrific crimes like child murder and swimming in the wrong type of lake. In modern fiction, the werewolf myth is malleable enough to fit into just about any sort of metaphor you require. In Ginger Snaps, it's female puberty, since the whole lunar cycle and blood thing is rather apt. In a few notable cases, usually as a cheap joke, Werewolfism, or lycanthropy, is mistaken for gayness, or vice versa. Someone. Wait a minute, are you gonna tell me you're a fag? I mean, if you're gonna tell me you're a fag, I don't think I can handle it. Charming. You could probably say that Teen Wolf and Twilight have a lot to do with puberty and coming of age, too. Dealing with body changes and new desires in a way that is definitely super healthy and not cause for concern. Oh, Twilight spoiler alert for those who don't already know, Jacob ends up dating Bella's f***ed up baby. Who hasn't been there? Am I right, teenagers? We can all relate to that. Who hasn't dated a baby? So we've got lycanthropy basically representing any sort of hidden aspect of ourselves that surfaces in frightening ways. And this usually amounts to some sort of sexual awakening, be it gay or hetero. And I gotta say, the implications of this can sometimes be a little gross. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have sex with a wolf. That would hurt. Though I'll admit, I might be willing to make an exception for Alcide.